Today on Ortho 2, we are going to be talking about a very important discovery in the field of paleoanthropology. That discovery would be the Harbin Skull, or Homo Longi, nicknamed Dragon Man. The discovery consists of a single, nearly complete skull. It was reportedly discovered in 1933 during construction work on a bridge. The bridge was built over the Songhua River in Harbin City. The discoverer was familiar with the recently discovered Peking Man only four years earlier. Due to the political issues in the region, the man felt that he had to hide the skull from authorities. He chose to hide it in an abandoned well. Before his death, he told his family about the skull and it was recovered in 2018. Chinese paleoanthropologist Ji Qiang then persuaded the family to donate it to a prominent university. This incredible story only makes this skull more interesting. However, since it was not excavated by scientists, we are left with many questions about its stratigraphic context and age. The exact location of the site is unknown, but through non-destructive X-ray fluorescence analysis, it was confirmed that the skull belonged to the alleged site. Further analysis of the element distributions and REE concentrations of the skull compared to mammalian fossils from the site of the bridge indicates the skull is from the Middle Pleistocene. Dating the skull with uranium series disequilibrium resulted in a minimum age of 146,000 years ago. Though they cannot attribute the skull to a specific layer or site, all of the evidence points to a skull belonging to the late Middle Pleistocene of the Harbin area. The skull was named after the Longjiang River from which it was found. Longjiang translates to Dragon River, leading to the nickname of Dragon Man. It was aptly named Homo Longi, considered by many researchers as a new species. We will get into this designation as a new species later on in the video. First, let us talk about its morphology. The skull is undistorted and almost entirely intact. The only thing wrong with the skull is only one tooth remains and some damage to the left zygomatic arch. The skull is massive. It is the longest human skull ever found and ranks highest or second highest for a handful of other size records. The size of the brain is large at 1420 cubic centimeters. This is not the largest brain volume but on par with Neanderthal and Middle Pleistocene sapient specimens. A CT scan of the brain revealed the brain case is clearly archaic. It has a number of features seen in Middle Pleistocene hominins but lacks some more primitive traits found in Homo erectus and Homo heidelbergensis. It has a protruding occipital fossa which is a defining characteristic of Neanderthal skulls. The temporals and parietals are not similar to archaic hominins, sapiens, or Neanderthals. The face is tucked under the skull like sapiens and unlike other more archaic forms. Unlike sapiens, the face is quite wide and features a very prominent brow. Overall, the skull has a combination of archaic and very modern Homo sapien-like traits. It is similar to other more fragmentary cranial remains of Chinese specimens such as Dali or Jinishan. The combination of traits seen in the Harbin skull represents a distinct morphology from other middle to late Pleistocene human species. It differs significantly from Neanderthal and sapien specimens. Due to this, many believe it should be designated as a new species. To some this is controversial, though it has been known for a long time that possibly multiple distinct hominid lineages lived in Asia during the middle and late Pleistocene. A lineage of these hominins are, of course, known as the Denisovans. DNA analysis of very fragmentary remains at Denisova Cave have shown that hominins living there were without a doubt distinct from Neanderthals and Sapiens. Denisova Cave had very fragmentary remains, though molars were found. The single molar of the Harbin skull is most similar to the molars from Denisova Cave. Another piece in the puzzle comes from our only other fossil of the so-called Denisovans. This fossil comes from a cave on the Tibetan Plateau and consists of a partial mandible. Phylogenetic analysis suggests the Harbin skull and the Jahe mandible form a sister group. 
The jaw fits the robustness of the skull and the molars are very similar. This evidence does suggest that this may be the skull of the enigmatic Denisovans or a closely related group. However, we should be careful with this assertion. Our Denisovan remains differ temporally and geographically. Though the Jahe mandible is around the same age as the Harbin skull, they are from 2400 kilometers apart. This is a very significant distance. If we factor in how diverse China is in terms of geography, you can start to see the problem with assuming these remains are closely related. The authors of the original paper deduced through Bayesian tip dating analysis that modern humans and Homo longi are more closely related to each other than to Neanderthals. Though if we compare the DNA found at Denisova Cave to Neanderthals and modern humans, it's obvious Neanderthals and Denisovans are much closer related to each other than to sapiens. DNA evidence has not been able to be collected from the Harbin skull. But if the skull is closely related to the Jahe mandible, then this comparison would make sense since DNA evidence of Denisovans was found at Kars Cave. Physical anthropologist Chris Stringer thinks that the Harbin skull is most similar to the Dolly skull and thus would belong to the hardly used species name of Homo doliensis. Though others are convinced that the skull is different enough from the Dolly cranium to deserve its own classification. The exact relation and classification of Homo longi remains unknown. We are still missing a crucial part of the story for Asian Middle Pleistocene hominins before we can confidently elaborate. Let's take a break from the complex scientific nomenclature and actually talk about Homo longi as the man he was. Fortunately, the paper included a reconstruction of what he may have looked like. The overall size and robustness of the skull strongly indicates that he was a male individual. Through analysis of the skull, the structure would suggest that this skull belonged to a male around 50 years old. This comparison is based on Homo sapiens ectocranial suture closure. The tooth wear of this individual suggests a much younger age. The only preserved tooth still has much of its enamel present. This specimen was obviously quite mature, but much younger than its cranial sutures would suggest. The Dragon Man would have had a very large Neanderthal-like nose. He also had a very large archaic eyebrow. Unlike Neanderthals and more archaic humans, the jaw did not protrude very much. His profile appears very human-like with his face tucked beneath his brow. His skin, hair, and eyes would have all likely been relatively dark. Though due to the high elevation of the region, his skin may have been lighter. We do not have any remains of his body, but we can confidently assume his body would have been very robust. A Neanderthal-like build would have most likely accompanied his large head. Even though the skull is very large, it does not suggest that Dragon Man would have been very tall. Neanderthals with similar sized skulls typically averaged less than 165 centimeters tall. It is unfortunate that no skeleton was found, but this skull is a truly amazing find. I believe it is just the tip of the iceberg for groundbreaking Asian discoveries. East Asia has long been an uncharted territory for paleoanthropology. We have a fair amount of remains, but putting the picture together has been hard. I don't know about you guys, but I love keeping up with the field of paleoanthropology. There is so much to talk about, and my favorite part, so much to imagine. This skull really did belong to a man that walked our planet thousands of years ago. He saw magnificent beasts, ate hearty meat-filled meals, and something I have been very interested in lately. He crafted his own tools. Stone Age tools are much more fascinating than you might think. I have been learning a lot about them and I will be making some videos in the future. Here is some of the stuff I have made so far. I do need to work on my flint napping though. Well, thanks for watching. No fancy outro. Arrivederci.